Okay, I wouldn't normally comment on this, but this is really bugging me. Um, those of you that know me well know that I'm a final year student at university studying forensic and criminological psychology. I've also studied forensic archaeology, you know, remains, location, burial sites, that kind of thing. So I know a little bit. Um, and I'm trying, this, this Jay Slater thing um, is just not washing with me. Um, his apparent remains, I say that because we don't even know if they are his remains, turn up, like, conveniently near to where his, like, phone last pinged, yeah? Um, that's a bit weird in itself. Um, when the investigation first started, well, you'd hope that that was where they first started, like, thoroughly searching with, like, cadaver dogs, etc. Um, and nothing was found, not even a beam, nothing. Then all of a sudden, his remains turn up right near to where they first started looking. That's a bit strange. I don't trust the Spanish police. I certainly don't trust that Lucy May. I think she's got more involvement in this. I don't trust her as far as I can throw her. Um, so, like, he's been missing for, like, nearly a month now. And I don't think that uh, the police knew how much media coverage this was going to get in the first place. I really don't. I think they underestimated that because people go missing all the time. So I don't think they, like realised how much media coverage they were going to get. So, this is bad for tourism. Nobody wants to go over there at the moment, do they? Because of this. So, they needed closure. So, all of a sudden, remains have turned up, conveniently, with his possessions with them. I mean, how were they placed? Has somebody placed them there? Um, I think these two British guys have had some kind of involvement in, in like what's happened to Jay. Um, and I think they basically paid the police off because like, they were discounted from the investigation from day one, which is ridiculous, considering their past. Um, they've given them a massive bribe, because they've obviously got loads of loose cash lying around, haven't they? Um, they give them a massive bribe. The police have gone away. Nothing to see here. Got all this media um, attention and pressure on the police. So they thought, right, we need to close this off. It's like affecting the economy, tourism, everything. So we need to provide a body quickly. Um, it's been a month. So let's provide the body close to where it's convenient, where his phone pinged, you know, we'll go with the narrative that, you know, he got into difficulty, you know, that kind of thing. I don't believe that for a second. And then let's all get on with our lives and forget it ever happened. I really hope when, you know, his loved ones, and like, obviously my heart goes out to his loved ones, they really do, um, but I really hope um, that, what, that they can do like a post-mortem in this country. A, to prove that actually... It is his remains. I mean, come on. We've got the media speculation here to, to, to say that it's his remains. We don't know if it's his remains or not. Um, it could be anybody's, couldn't it? So let's prove through DNA it's his, it's his remains. And then, um, aside from that, maybe cause of death? Anyone? Yeah? Um, so I hope there's a second post-mortem, uh, which might reveal more stuff. But I really don't trust, trust these Spanish police at all. I think this is just one big cover-up and they've just provided the remains just to cover up the whole story and to get closure. And I don't even believe that, that Lucy May's story where she said, um, you know, she had contact with him and he said he got, like, one bar of battery and all that rubbish. That seems to me very, very staged. I mean, if your batteries were out on your phone, wouldn't you contact someone before it got to 1%? Do you know what I mean? It's a bit convenient, that is. I think something happened to him beforehand and this whole thing has been staged. I think maybe something got out of hand, like, to do with this Rolex that got... It's not a Rolex, sorry, that, that, I can't remember the name of the watch, but that got stolen that was worth a fortune. And I've seen on YouTube, um, I've seen, like, that apparent Lucy screaming, like, about him being, you know... Um, I think that story is more credible, to be honest with you, because that was from CCTV, and that sounded like somebody had actually attacked him. And um, I think uh, they must have got rid of him after that somewhere. And the Spanish police knew about this and uh, just accepted a backhanded bribe for a fair few thousand. And, uh, you know, you two guys can uh, fly back to England and there's nothing more said. Just another missing person. Hey-ho, we'll all get on with the lives. Don't fucking think so. OK, so a lot of you have seen my previous video on what I think doesn't look quite right on the Jay Slater case and what my opinion was and what might have happened. Um, so... I've looked at a lot of the comments and I've gone away and I've uh, thought about this and like in my academic brain I've tried to make sense of it all um, and I've watched some things on YouTube and obviously the news outlets have confirmed this and confirmed that. Um, so I'm going to tell you what my timeline of why I actually think has happened with Jay Slater. Because there are some things that haven't even been mentioned on any of the comments, on any of the YouTube clips, on any of the news outlets, have not even been mentioned, well, I haven't seen them mentioned anyway, that 
that I think if the UK police were investigating this would have been crucial to this case. So first of all, I believe that Jay Slater's life was ended soon after the nightclub and somewhere around the beach. That CCTV footage may support that, but it may be fake, who knows. But I believe it happened around there. There was some kind of interaction set up with these two guys. Lucy May was heavily involved in this, but I don't think she expected it to go so far. Now it's to do with substances or money or that watch or watches, whatever. I'm not interested in the details on why they met, but something happened with that interaction that ended the life of Jay Slater. Now I do believe that Jay Slater travelled for an hour up north, up into the hills, with these two guys to this B&B, but not as a passenger, as a body. This brings me on to my first point, something that hasn't been mentioned on any of my comments, and not that I've seen anyway, and on the YouTube videos out there, or any news outlets. The very car that these two guys used to transport, in my opinion, Jay's body up north, up into the hills, an hour away conveniently. What is the timeline of when this was hired out? Did they hire this out for this journey? And also, why weren't forensics all over this car impounding it on the very day? That would happen in the UK. Do you know what I mean? Check it for spatter marks. There's no point checking for DNA because obviously he was probably in the car. But I don't think he was like alive in the car. So they should check it for any type of like struggle or anything like that. You know what I mean? Get it checked. And then this Airbnb. When was this actually booked? We need to know this stuff. When was it booked? Was it booked on purpose so they've got a destination to, like, you know, sort out the body and stop overnight while they're doing this? I mean, you know, this is basic investigation, come on. We literally have no proof that Jay was, like, coherent and alive at this Airbnb. That photograph, like, you know, with that in his hand coming out the stairs, that could have been anybody. We haven't had a selfie up there or anything like that. And we have Lucy May's word that she spoke to him, which I think is a little rubbish. That lady that apparently saw him walking up the road, like going off on his jollies on to, to start like an 11 hour journey on foot, you know, I believe that she was paid to say that. If anybody asks you, you know, just say you saw this lad walking up quite fast, he was going off road, you know what I mean? And there's some money for you. I mean, come on, my mum would do that. My mum would do it for a fiver. Do you know what I mean? She's 75. My next point, which I don't think has been mentioned, that should have been a crucial part of the investigation, um, was Lucy May, her account. Now, she said that she had interaction with him, okay, and, you know, we all heard the interaction, yeah? So, because she's not part of the investigation, there's no reason to impound her phone. That phone needs checking. The IT guys need to come in. If this was in the UK, that phone would be thoroughly checked. Okay, we need proof and evidence that this interaction has actually taken place, because I think she's made that up. But what's interesting to me on that very first search, when the cadaver dogs were out... They may well have indicated that something was down there, some anomaly, but the police either ignored it on purpose or they already knew Jay was down there as part of the bribe from those two. I've seen so many comments saying, why go to all this length? Why did the authority go to all this effort to cover up this one lad going missing, coming into difficulty, blah, blah, blah. I'll tell you why. Because it's devastating to the economy and worth millions. The Spanish authority need you, British people mainly, to believe that some random teenager went out on a night out, befriended two guys who were mules, who were like double his age, accepted a lift an hour away up into the hills because he had nowhere to stay, even though he was on holiday. They went to an Airbnb, he had no charge on his phone, even though he asked them for a charge and they provided him with one. He couldn't be bothered to wait around till 10 o'clock for a buzz and decided to go the opposite way and walk back down to town, which is an 11-hour walk, and got into difficulty off the field. The Spanish authority need you to believe that. They can't have you, potential future tourists who are going to spend your hard-earned cash over there, to believe what may be the actual truth, that Tenerife is controlled by gang-related crimes, trafficking, substance, everything. And Jay, unfortunately, might have chose or got caught up in all this with Lucy May's help. Guys, you've got to start thinking outside the box. Stop looking at news outlets and YouTube clips that say this has been confirmed and that's been confirmed. Honestly, they've all got agendas. They have. And they've got to protect the tourism industry and the economy. It's vital. Even as high up as the Spanish courts, the authorities, they will all back the Spanish police and whatever they're doing to protect themselves. Kind of makes you wonder, doesn't it, how many people have actually gone missing. And I wouldn't be surprised if some of these ravines in Tenerife are like makeshift graveyards. 
That Airbnb should have been tented off on the day and forensically examined on the day in a timeline of when it was booked. That hire car should have been impounded on that day and forensically examined in a timeline of when that was booked. Lucy May's mobile phone should have been confiscated and thoroughly examined by IT specialists for everything that comes in and everything that goes out in a timeline. And those two guys should have been arrested and placed into police custody under the police and criminal evidence clock, which is the pace clock, 72 hours, which will give investigators plenty enough time to sift through their phone with a fine tooth comb. I wonder where their phones ping that morning. Hey guys, okay, so I've had so many DMs and comments about Jay Slater's fingerprint situation and whether he can be formally identified by his fingerprints with being out there so long. And I'm going to clear it up for you now. Before I start, let me just quickly give you my credentials so you know I'm not just talking like biased rubbish just for the sake of this, okay? So, as most of you know, I'm a final year student at university studying forensic and criminological psychology. And I've also studied forensic archaeology, you know, burial sites, location indicators, all that kind of stuff. But for the purpose of this video, I've also got a university qualification in forensic science and fingerprints. So I do know a little bit about this part of the investigation. So Jay Slater's remains were apparently recovered from that ravine almost a month after he was first reported missing. Now, in biometric data analysis or fingerprint analysis, there's a period of time called the post-mortem interval or PMI. And this gives investigators a window of opportunity between the time of death and when decomposition has gone too far to be able to get reliable biometric information. Because everybody's fingerprints are made up of ridges, arches and loops. Now when decomposition has gone too far, when that window of opportunity is gone, enough fluid is lost so the pattern changes and you can no longer get a positive ID. Now this window of opportunity varies depending on the climate and the environment. So for a quick example, if an unidentified corpse was found in like say parts of Russia or the Arctic where it's way below freezing, these fingerprints can be preserved for a long time and the PMI window can open up to about 50 days. However, in Jay Slater's case, the longest window of opportunity to be able to obtain useful data from biometrics or fingerprints or the PMI in the warm conditions like it was in Tenerife is up to four days. Not weeks, days. So the mere fact that all the mainstream news outlets, all the media and all the YouTube clips are all confirming that Jay Slater has been positively identified after being stuck out in this ravine in the sweltering heat for nearly a month by his fingerprints is complete crap. It's either not him and they're all lying to save tourism, or it's not him and those two guys ended his life before his family knew about it and were told to keep